We all know bees are extremely clever beasts, but the We Wonder Festival at Wentworth Woodhouse showed them in a whole new light. A fun presentation of magical hives in which bees were at the cinema, enjoying spa bathing and even exploring space. But seriously, Wentworth Woodhouse Gardens and the wider Fitzwilliam Wentworth Estates, with their huge range of plants, shrubs and trees, are a natural oasis for bees. Local honey producers have never been busier. Well, my name's Philip Ascombe and I live in Hoyland and I've been keeping bees in this area for the last 47 years, I would think, um, or thereabouts. Um, I currently have about 80 colonies and they're spread out roughly on the Wentworth Estate, basically. And I've had these, these bees, or some bees, in this, these gardens for the last 10 years, I would think. I was invited to put some bees here by Mr. Newbold, uh, one of the previous owners. And uh, it's a lovely place to keep a few bees, and they do quite well. Uh, this morning, I'm here to, um, to prepare the bees for the, for, the, for the move up onto the heather moors. Uh, we move them each autumn up onto the moors to, to gather the heather honey uh, when, while it's in flower here in August and, and early September. So this morning I shall be preparing the bees by putting a screen board on so that when we move them they can breathe and um, we move them early morning or late evening when they finish flying or before they started flying and strap them up, load them onto the van and take them up onto, up onto the moors. These particular ones are Buckfast breed of bee um, they come from uh, Denmark. The queens are imported in from Denmark, a top queen breeder in Denmark. And they're docile and quite productive. So they're ideal for keeping in the garden where there's public, because they're not very aggressive. In fact, they're very good tempered really, which makes the job of a beekeeper much easier. The bees at Wentworth are hugely productive, making honey across three seasons, spring, summer, and finally, heather honey in autumn. Throughout the flowering seasons, the bee colonies work tirelessly, gathering nectar from flower borders, wild meadows and trees. Bees may travel several miles on each trip, but they always return to their home colony to store the collected nectar. In the hive, the nectar dries out in the warm breeze created by the bees' wings and turns into honey. The bees produce a wax lid to seal each honey cell in the comb. Honey produced in spring and summer is relatively thin. To harvest this honey, the sealed edges of each honeycomb frame are trimmed off and the frames are loaded into an extractor. The extractor drum spins to release the honey, which is left to settle. It then drains through a filter in the settling tank and jars are filled from the tap at the bottom. But it is the third crop of honey, which is the joy of local beekeepers, up on the majestic Peak District Moors to the northwest of Sheffield, we join Phil again for the highlight of the beekeeping year. Well, here we are, we're on Bradfield Moor. Um, we brought the bees up from Wentworth Gardens. These are some of the bees that were in the gardens. And we brought them up to gather a crop of heather honey. But before the bees get up here on the moor, we've got some preparation to do. And Pat and I always ensure that there's a new queen in each hive and plenty of worker bees. Because you're asking the bees to, to, to gather another crop at the end of the season. So it's important that you have a, an abundance of young worker bees to gather the crop. Most people work the bees on the heather for extracted honey, which they will put in the jars. But uh, Pat and I, my business partner and bee buddy, we give the bees just a starter strip um, which is just a small piece of wax in the frame. So the bees actually build the frame, the, the, the comb in the frame, fill it with honey and seal it. And we'll have a look at that in a moment in this hive to see what progress they've made. Well, I brought my smoker today, which is lit as you can see. Uh, I always light it because you never know. Uh, if you puff a little bit of smoke on the bees, it does subdue them. Uh, Today I think they'll be quite amenable to us going in because it's a pleasant sunny day. It's when you try to operate on bees in poor weather that they resent it. 
uh, which is fair enough. So we'll have a quick look in this one to see if they've made any progress from when we were here last week. So we remove the roof and a, a board and then we have a crown board which we just ease off gently. And there we see is the bees on the combs. Now as I showed you earlier, the, um, that little thin strip of wax has been transformed into some beautiful heather honeycomb. And you can see that they're just starting to cap it. Um, you can see this area here is already sealed, which means the bees have extracted the water content from the heather nectar and sealed it to preserve it. And it's not until all this comb is fully filled and sealed that we would harvest it. Um, and that's a beautiful, lovely, white, pristine comb of honey. Just to let you see the colour of the honey, it is a red, a dark, well, darkish red colour, you can see with the sun shining through the comb, as opposed to the golden summer honey. The bees eat the honey and um, generate the wax particles and form it into the comb. The bees have been here already for about um, three weeks uh, from the beginning of August and they should be here for another two or three weeks depending on the weather. Um, we shall harvest the honey crop and then we'll move the bees back down into the winter apiaries and um, we'll fit a mouse guard and, and, and make sure they've all enough food to, su to, to survive the winter and that's the end of the beekeeping season really. Hi, I'm Pat and I'm Phil's apprentice um, but now I'm more business partner. I've been keeping bees for about 11 years and I first became interested by watching a few programmes on TV about all the American beekeepers that took their bees to pollinate the almonds, which is on a much bigger you know, industrial scale. And they were talking about all the colony collapse disorder uh, that affected their bees at that time and how important the bees were for pollinating crops, which in turn feed humans and how important it is in the life cycle of you know, everything really that we need, we need the crops to be pollinated in order to feed ourselves. And when they looked at beekeepers in Britain, I thought what an old, it's quite an old fashioned craft really. And it piqued my interest that it's something that it wouldn't be re replaced by robots and some sort of craft that I could get into. And following that, my husband bought me a book on beekeeping and I, I went along to a local beekeeping meeting. That's where I met Phil. Phil was actually doing a talk about his experiences, which I found quite fun. And uh, I became his Saturday girl. And uh, once I'd finished uh, the course that I did through my local beekeeping association, I actually bought at one colony of bees. And 11 years later, I've now got 80 colonies of bees. I'm up on the moor, pollinating the, uh, the plants up here. I've now got my own business and I'm loving it. It's the best thing, best move I ever made. It's an absolutely wonderful thing to do. Between Christmas and New Year, we go around the bees and we do heft them for weight, just to make sure that they do have enough food. Um, and we will feed them with some candy. If, if required. And then what we find is around early March, mid-March is when the queens will start laying again, which coincides with the day lengths uh, extending. And she will start laying eggs and that will increase the colony numbers. And then we start the season all over again. Within the colony, there are three types of bee. There's just one queen and she'll last anything up to three or five years. 
and there's about in this in these particular colonies there's probably about 60,000 worker bees and they're all female. Now in summer they will only live for about six weeks because they're really busy they'll be out foraging and they'll forage all day while ever there's daylight and the weather's nice and warm and what happens is their, their wings just wear out they just can't fly back and they'll die and then in winter um, when we take the bees back from the heather the bees that are born then later in September early October they'll live for six months but the overwintered bees generally will just be in hibernation they'll be in cluster a tight cluster and they'll just be there to keep the the uh, rest of the bees warm they'll just huddle together and in in march when there's more bees being hatched then they'll die off now these are drones and they're much bigger than the worker bees and the, these are the males now at the end of the season the female bees the workers nibble away at their wings and they will throw them out of the hive because they're no longer useful in winter because there's no virgin queens being hatched and there's 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 no more mating to be done. So in effect, they are redundant in winter. The thousands of bees have worked furiously for weeks, gathering nectar from the heather. And there is nothing more exotic than the taste of a freshly cut slice of this connoisseur treat. Back at base, the heather honey is prepared for sale. It's much thicker than spring and summer honey. It's best presented simply by slicing the comb from the frame cutting into portions and put into boxes. Nothing of this natural product is wasted. The wax from the combs is melted down to make candles and beeswax polish. Wentworth Woodhouse is proud to support local beekeepers in their efforts to preserve the future of bee colonies. Bees are crucial in helping sustain the ecosystems of our planet.